What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, man? We back, we back, we back. We're going to episode 21. You know, it's a, it's a huge accomplishment, you know, just to go this long, you know, all by the grace of God. You know, I do this for my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, I pray you get encouraged. I pray you get inspired, you know, continue to um, walk, you know, walk in what God called you to do, walk in your purpose, you know. My main purpose is to get out of my shell and, uh, you know, you know, glorify my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you know. Um, we all fighting this good fight of faith, you know, we all fighting as believers, you understand, um, you know, together, you know, in this world, though, for we are the light of the world, cause to bring change, cause to um, be a representation of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as we call to do, you know, we're more than capable, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world, amen, but I'm so honored that you, you know, watch this episode 21, I'm so honored, you know, our glory to God, you know, um, I thank God for this platform, like I said, I thank God for this platform, it's a beautiful platform, you know, Anybody can come watch this, you know, anybody can come get inspired or learn more about the word. It doesn't matter what age, you know, all glory to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, man, you know. Uh, I pray you get inspired by this episode. It's a good episode, you know. I see some good stuff in it, so, you know, all glory to God, you know. I want to um, um, give on to my leaders, Bishop McKinney. This is my leader. Um, give on to my church, um, the Love Center Church in Sumter, and the Prayer Mountain Ministries in Columbia. If you want to um, go to them churches, you just contact me and I'll give you the info and um, the address. And it's more than welcome to have you there, you know what I'm saying, for sure. Uh, but all glory to God on this great Saturday day. Uh, it's a blessed day, awesome day, you know. I thank God for this day. Uh, the, joy, the joy of the Lord is our strength, you know. Amen. So thank God for this day, you know. So let's get right into it, though. Um, the title of this episode... Um, is called character character you know um uh, very important important term is character um as believers we have a certain character we abide by you know once we give our um um our lives to our lord Savior jesus christ you know um there's a difference between the world character and and the believer's character there's certain things once we get saved we don't do no more you know and once we get saved some stuff we start to do and godly character you know um I like the same one my, my my man of God said um he said um he used to hate the those hate the things they used to love and love the, the love the things they used to hate so it's a change that's happening a lot it's a change in your character that needs to happen um as we grow in the things of God so this is a key thing so the first thing I want you to know this is a self evaluation episode like I want you to evaluate yourself as I you know do this episode I want you to evaluate yourself ask yourself are you walking in godly character how do you know the, God, the character of God? How can we grow in the character of God? And what's our strength and weaknesses in as far as characters of God? What's our strength and weaknesses? So for the verse, first verse I want to hit is um, 1 Samuel 16, 7. 16, 7. It says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge by his appearance or height, for I, I have rejected him. The Lord does, does not see the things you see them. He doesn't see the things that, the way you see them. People judge by the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. But this is a key verse um, for us to start it off. He's talking to Prophet Samuel. Samuel's choosing the king. He's choosing all the kings. Um, you know, Jesse got all his sons. And he's looking at, Samuel's looking at their appearance. But one thing Samuel's not doing, he's not looking at the heart. And the Lord has immediately said to Samuel, he said, the first thing I do when I look at a person, I look at the person's heart. Now, another way for a person, another word for a heart is the character. God said, this is so. This is why this is an important episode. God said, the first thing I look at is the person's character, who they are. Now, what is a character? Character is, is what a person does when no one's watching. It's their habits. It's, 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 it's their being. It's what they do constantly. That's their character, you know? So as believers, we, the first thing God looks at is, is our heart, which is our character. So we have to um, Walk in godly character. Like David said, create in me a clean heart, renew me a right spirit. You know, if I'm not walking in godly character, I'm not really a really good representation of Jesus Christ. You know, I can go to church. I can do this. I can pray. I can, I can you know, say I, I go to church. But if I don't walk in love, then I'm not walking in godly character. If I don't have joy, then I'm not walking in godly character. Then I'm not a good representation of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we have to walk in godly character to be a good representation of Jesus Christ. For God chose David because his heart was right, which he had the character of God. Meaning that when God was going to raise up David, 
that he knew that David was going to give the glory to God. You know what I'm saying? God is, is trying to raise you up for his glory. And he wants you, he wants, he wants you to wants you to be great in him, but he also wants you to give him the glory, you know? It's one thing God gives you a platform and that you take the glory from God, like, oh, this all me. No, it's it's all because of the glory of God that we're able to do the great things that we do on this earth. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna do great things on this earth, but it's gonna be for the glory of God. You know, this platform is for the glory of God, you know. Um it's the verse that says, He that's humble shall be exalted, but he that exalts himself shall be humble. As we continue to walk in humility, God will exalt you. He will take you places that you've never been before. For your humility, which is a character trait of God, will take you places that you've never been before. For God give grace to the humble. You humble, God said, I will give you more grace. I will sustain you. For the Bible said, the meat shall inherit the earth. You know what I'm saying? So we have to walk in humility. That's another character trait. Like I said before, it's a difference between the world character versus believers. Even though believers you are in this world, but you're not of it. You don't fit in. I don't fit in. You know, we're not meant to fit in because you're not made for this world. You in it, but you're not of it. You know what I'm saying? You're made to give God glory. You're made to be different. You're made to um, leave an impact. You're made for greatness. You know what I'm saying? So as we get to know who our, who who we are as believers, we begin to walk in the character of God. You know, we're not trying to fit in with everybody because I know I'm custom made. The Bible said you are God's masterpiece. You are literally, literally a masterpiece. There's nothing missing there's nothing broken you are god's masterpiece when god made you he said oh yeah i like that that's a masterpiece you know i made it perfect you know what i'm saying you are who god wants you to be you know what i'm saying you don't got to change yourself to, to fit in with somebody else but be who god called you to be and walk in god the character you know the world's character you know they um they scam people they lie they talk about others they um they hold unforgiveness they don't respect people you know they don't walk in love you know they don't have an intimate relationship with God. That's characters of the world. But we're not of the world. For, we're not of the world. You know what I'm saying? We walk in the character of God, which is love, joy, peace, um, long-suffering, meekness, humility, self-control. You know, walk in the character of God. We have to evaluate ourselves each and every day. Am I walking in the character of God? Am I walking in love? Do I have joy in my heart? Do I have patience? You know, do I, do I walk in forgiveness? Do I forgive people when people talk about me? Da, 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 da. Do I forgive them? You know what I'm saying? So we have to evaluate yourself each and every every time. So as believers, we have to know once we walk in good character, we are representing Christ. The best way we can represent Christ is doing the character of what our, our Lord Savior Jesus Christ is. You know what I'm saying? When someone, um, I guess, do something wrong on um, something wrong to you, and you forgive them, say, "Hey, I forgive you." Da 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 da. You cool? Da 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 da. That's walking in the character of God. You know, when we're generous to certain people, some people may be struggling. Say, "Hey, I'm gonna give you a couple of dollars." That's walking in the character of God. That's generosity. You know what I'm saying? Once we um, um, we have patience for something, you know, that people, you know, some people are impatient. We have patience, but we have patience for stuff. It will walk in the character of God. That's walking in the character of God. But we also know that we're Christ's ambassadors. We're representing Christ. There's always somebody watching you. No matter where you go, there's somebody that's watching you. There's somebody actually that's looking up to you, that's looking at the character the way you're walking right now. You know what I'm saying? For you are Christ's ambassadors. But God said, he said, um, you represent me. He said, I'm going to take you places and you have to be a good representation of who I am. You know, it says in 1 Corinthians 15, 33, it says, bad community, bad community corrupts good character. Powerful verse, bad community corrupts good character. That means if you're hanging around the wrong group of people, it's going to corrupt your good character. It's, like, it's going to contaminate you. You know what I'm saying? If I hang around a lot of people that cuss a lot. What I'm going to do? I'm going to start cussing. You know what I'm saying? So you have to be careful who you hang around. If I hang around people that talk about people, gossip about people, that's what I'm going to start doing. It's going to contaminate you. So we have to hang around group of believers. You know, we ask God, Lord, help me find the good relationships, the strong relationships, divine relationships that will help me with my character. You know what I'm saying? The Bible said that keep, keep your heart with all diligence for out, for out of it flows the issues of life. The Bible says, keep your heart with all diligence. No matter what, you got to protect the heart. Another way for the heart is the character. You got to protect your character. Stay a person of integrity. You know what I'm saying? Don't change who you are. In 2 second, second Corinthians 6, 17, 6, 17 said, Wherefore, come out from among them, but be ye separate. As believe, sometimes we have to be separated from other people. And sometimes it's good that, um, you know, we don't hang around people all the time. Or you like in isolation. 
it's good sometimes because that's sometimes how God can get your attention. You know, sometimes God can get your attention when everybody's around you. You know what I'm saying? When everybody's talking to you, everybody calling you on the phone. Da, 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 you know what I'm saying? It may be boring life sometimes, but it's it's, it's going to be a fruitful life. Oh, that's powerful. It may be a boring life sometimes, but it's going to be a fruitful life because God's going to implant some stuff in you in your isolation season, in your separated season. And that separated season is going to be beneficial to a lot of people when you meet, um, when you get to, um, the season um, God wants to take you. Amen? Real powerful. And it's a third thing. It's um, Romans 12 too. It says, don't copy the behavior of this world, customs of this world, but let God transfer you by into a new person by the way you think. Then you learn God's will for you and which is good and pleasant for you. So God said, don't copy this world, but but be be separate. And he said, I'm going to transform you by the way you think. As believers, the biggest thing we can do is change the way we think, you know. Um, the enemy can trap you by by a pair, by um certain strongholds in our lives, thinking that maybe um God doesn't want this for me. But that's it. That's just, that's a lie from the enemy. God wants every God wants every good thing to ha to happen towards you. You know what I'm saying? So we have to don't, don't copy the custom of this world. It says in Psalms 15. I like this verse. It says, "Who may worship in the sanctuary, Lord? Who may enter the presence of the holy hill? Those who live by blameless lives and do what is right." And speaking the truth. So we're going to start right there. It said blameless lies. Now the word blameless means a person who is innocent of of um who is innocent of not of, of wrongdoing. So the person that does right. You know what I'm saying? A person that nobody's perfect but a person that does right that a person that um walks in integrity is honest is is um respects people. Those who um live blameless lies can enter the presence of the Lord. You know and speak the truth from a sincere heart. So you got to be honest, you know. It also says those, verse 3, it said those who refuse to gossip and harm their neighbors or speak ill of their friends. So we can't gossip about people. We can't talk about people. I know it's maybe tempted for other people to talk down on people, but gossiping is um, it's a sin. You can't talk bad about people, you know what I'm saying? Even when people done, done bad to you, you know what I'm saying? You got to walk in forgiveness, which is the character of God. The four, it said, verse 4, it said those who despise flagrant sinners and honor the faithful followers of the Lord and keep the promises even when it hurts. Now this is saying you're not supposed to like like hate people. You're not supposed to hate people, but it's like when someone's like like I said, like I said before, bad character bad company corrupts good character. You know what I'm saying? So you got to know who people are and know who you're hanging around. You can't hang around everybody. You know what I'm saying? It said those who honor the faithful followers of the Lord. They hang around believers, they'll speak the word, you know, um God will honor that, you know what I'm saying? So I like this verse, you read the whole version of Psalms 15 on your own, but it says the key thing to know if you're close to God is is how kind you are to others, um, how you control your tongue, and your integrity. So when when a person asks you, when when you ask a person, are you close to God? They say, Yeah, I'm close to God, you know. But if they if they're not kind to other people, and if they talk to other people, then how are they close to God? You know what I'm saying? Because you only close to God when you have the character of God. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? It's a verse like the verse says, um, how can you how can you hate your brother but say you love God? You know what I'm saying? That doesn't make sense. You hate your brother, but you love God. For God is love. We have to walk in love. <clears throat> if I love God, then I love my brother. You know what I'm saying? And the verse says, How can you say you um hate God which you, you seen your brother but you haven't seen God? You know what I'm saying? So we have to walk in love. So, <clears throat> so it's a key thing to say your closest to God is to determine how kind you are to people. You know what I'm saying? How you control your tongue. You know what I'm saying? Um, and how you walk in honesty. You know what I'm saying? So key thing to think about. And I like this verse, real powerful verse. Proverbs 16, 8. It says, better to have little with godliness than to be rich and dishonest. Real powerful. So this is saying that it's better to have little with godliness than to be rich. Um with dishonest, you know, so as, as the world, we think that it's get your money up, get your money. You got money, man. You, you then you prosperous, then you successful. But the, this doesn't say that it said it's better to have a little, okay. You live in paycheck to paycheck, but you live in a holy life though. You know what I'm saying? You live in a faithful life unto the Lord rather than the person who rich got a lot of money, but he dishonest, he scam, he's, he's rude to people. He talks down to people. He doesn't live a holy life. God said, I respect the person. With the little, with the little, but they're living a holy life. He said, "I respect that person." You know what I'm saying? He said, 
that person has a better chance, you know, to making it to heaven. It's like the verse, like the verse that says, the, the rich man with the hell, but the, the um the poor man with the heaven. You know what I'm saying? The verse says, better to have little with godliness than to be rich and dishonest. You know what I'm saying? It's better to have little with God than to have much with the enemy. You know what I'm saying? Real powerful. Better have little with God than have much with the enemy. So the change has to be on the inside of us rather than the outside. You know, sometimes we want our outside lives to change, but the main thing we got to change is our heart, is our character. You know what I'm saying? And as we change our character, the outside world will change according to the inside world. You know what I'm saying? I got to watch my heart. If I continue to be genuine, be honest, be, be true to God, God will bless you. You know what I'm saying? God will bless me. You know what I'm saying? He said, I will bless your life. You know what I'm saying? So our success is equivalent to how well we walk into, walk into the character of God. Real powerful. It's not depending on how much money you got. Because that's what the verse says. It's better to be little with godliness than to be rich um, and dishonest. So your success is equivalent to how well you walk in the character of God. <coughs> Excuse me. So we know our character can take, take us places and open doors for us that, you know, probably nothing else will open doors for us. So this next verse is real powerful. It's in Romans 5, 3. Romans 5, 3. It says, We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character. And character strengthens our confidence or hope of salvation. And this hope will not leave us to disappointment. It will not disappoint you. For we know how dearly God loves us because we have get, because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with, with his love. So stop at verse 3. It says, when we run a child in tribulations, it develops endurance. Endurance. When you think of endurance, you think of, you know, um, you know a, a trap person. And they run endurance to long, long distances. Long distance, distances. Uh, they, they have endurance, you know. Uh, the wrong, long distances. You need endurance, you know what I'm saying? But this endurance is... Um, it's, 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 it's meaning is that we all run in a race, you know what I'm saying? We all run in a race, a race of God has set before us. We all run in a race. You know, some people, um, they, they're fast sprinters, but they, they get tired easily. You know, like I said, life is life is a marathon, not a sprint. You know what I'm saying? So it's saying that the people that have endurance, um, they mean they, they believe God in long stretches, long stretches. They believe God. You now, some people might believe God just right here. But once it's run out, their faith is empty. But some people, people believe God right here, right here, right here. And once that race, they, they believe God in those long stretches. They just have an endurance of faith. Which is a real, real key term. An endurance of faith. You know what I'm saying? And that endurance of faith is developed in, in, um, in, um, in our lives. In our lives. When things, bad things happen in our lives and God help us overcome the situations, it help us um, build that build a, um, a faith. The faith. It would help us build that faith. You know, it's like what David said. Um, David was confident of facing Goliath because he faced the lion and the bear. You know what I'm saying? He said, the same God that helped me defeat the lion and the bear will help me defeat Goliath. You know what I'm saying? It's called, you know, these testimony trophies. The things we go through in life, it's, it's beneficial because it's helped us build endurance. You know, if God could get me through this, you know, I know he could get, I know, if, if God get me through that, I know he could get through this. You know what I'm saying? That's basically what it is. It builds endurance. And as we and, and you know continue to grow in God, it helps us endure and it helps us strengthen our character, you know. Um it helps us hope help us have the character of peace. A character, you know, a, a long stretch of believing, have a character of peace, have a character of patience, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um so um endurance develops strength of character, and the character strengthens the confidence, hope of salvation. And so this hope will not disappoint you. So like I said, when we run to these trials and tribulations, it develops endurance. So it's saying that, it's also saying that there's purpose in our trials and tribulations. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we ask God, why is this happening for, to me? You know? You know that it's all things work together for the good. And that, you know, what the enemy meant for bad, God could turn around for the good. But it also builds endurance, you know? Endurance, like I said before, is, is, is to believe God in long stretches over time. You see these mighty men of God in the Bible. They kept believing God. They kept believing God. This God's gonna do this. God does do this. And it took, you know, so it took a long time though. But it's, they had that endurance already established. That's why I say, um, remember thy creator in the days of thy youth. 
while the evil days draw not, while the evil days are not even here yet. You know what I'm saying? It's saying that build this foundation of your relationship with God so that when trials and tribulations come, you have the endurance to, you know, to face those trials and tribulations. You know what I'm saying? And once your endurance is developed, you have it, it builds a strength of character. It, it becomes who you are. You know what I'm saying? It becomes who you are. You know what I'm saying? So I pray you got something from that. And um, I like this verse. Uh, Hebrews 4.12. It says, um, it says, For the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharpening any two-edged sword, cutting the soul and the spirit. It exposes the inward thoughts and desires. So it's, it said the word of God is the sharpest thing on this earth. You know what I'm saying? So actually, like I said, like I said, Romans 12, 2, it said God's changed the way you think. The way we help change the way we think is to read the word of God, you know, daily. Proverbs is a good um, book. Corinthians, um, go to different translations, you know, it can help you, um, you know, with the word, you know, sometimes it may be uh, um, not understandable at first, but, you know, go to different translations, NLT translation, New Living, New Living Translation is a good translation, so yeah, um, reading the word of God is, is alive and it's powerful, it's the most powerful thing on this earth, um, so the last verse is, I'm gonna hit this, um, the Holy Spirit, the, but the Holy Spirit produces kind of fruits in our lives. These are the character traits: love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So you know you're walking in the character of God when you have these character traits. Now it's the Holy Spirit that produces these characters in our lives. So we need the Holy Spirit. So we ask that we got you can ask the Holy Spirit, help me, Holy Spirit, with um kindness. Help Holy Holy Spirit with kindness, and the Holy Spirit will help you with kindness. Help me hold spirit with self-control. I need self-control. I need to control my emotions. I need to control my body. I need to control my thoughts. Help me hold spirit with, with self-control. And that's what he's called to do. He's called to be your comforter, to help you in times of trouble. So, those are the key character traits. You know, I believe walk in love. You know, God is love. We have to walk in love. And joy, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Rejoice in the Lord always. We should always rejoice in the Lord. Patience. It's powerful. I like this verse in Proverbs 16, 32. It says, better be patient than to be powerful. Better have self-control to conquer the city. <coughs> so I want... <coughs> so each of us, you know, it's, I got to evaluate myself. Each of us got to evaluate ourselves. Like, are we walking in the character of God? And if we are, what's our strengths and what's our weaknesses? You know, what can we work on? What can, you know, we build upon? You know, so I want you, you know, evaluate your character. You know, are you walking in the character of God? And if you are... Then God's pleased with you. You know what I'm saying? And great things are gonna happen for your life in which you walk in the character of God. Doors are gonna start opening for you. You know, you never thought it before. God's gonna do great things in your life. So, um, uh, this is the episode. You know, I'm honored. You know, you watched it. You know, all glory to God. All glory to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You know, uh, subscribe, share, uh, to the to the YouTube channel. You know, uh, let somebody else know if, if they need help with the word. You know, um. You never know what people need, you know what I'm saying? So, I always want to be a help to other people. Um, and um, i see you next time, you know. I plan to do episode, um, a lot more episodes, like, recent, um, recently. I'm, I plan to do a lot more episodes, so, you know, I thank God for that, you know. So, I'll go to God and stay blessed.